Hi, I'm David Tepper from ORT Technical Institute in downtown Skokie. We're actually called ORT Chicago. We are discussing today's subnetting. In our class, we are going to tell you about a new way to subnet. Everyone is scared to death of subnetting. They think it's so difficult. But we're going to show you a real easy way to do it. <coughs> Typically, we are going to take a base network and we're going to divide it into new networks. That's what subnetting means, taking a network and dividing it. <coughs> Everything is based on the subnet mask. And typically, when we see a slash 24, our subnet mask is 255-255-2550. And that represents three groups of eight octets. Three times eight is 24, so we say slash 24. We are gonna borrow bits from this group here to create new networks. What we do is we start with this chart. And this chart is basically how to convert a decimal number into binary. We start with the number one, we double it to two, four, double it again, again to eight, 16, 32, 64, and finally 128. This equals two to the nth power. And that's how most people know how to subnet. We're gonna do it much simpler. All we're gonna do is we're gonna use this chart. We're going to do it in a couple of different ways. First, we're going to divide this base network into new networks based on number of hosts. So if someone came to me and said, Dave, divide this such that we can make networks to be able to have 37 hosts. I'm going to look at this chart. I'm going to look at 37 as the number that we want. 32 is smaller, so I've got to go to the next bigger one. I'm going to put a 1 under the 64. Since I'm starting from the left, because we're in America, we are reading English, we read from the left to the right, I'm going to put a 1 under the 128. That's going to make our new subnet mask A slash 26. Let me write that for you. Slash 26. We have borrowed two bits from the host portion so we're going to have 255.255.255.128 plus 64 is 192. That equals a slash 26. This is the new subnet mask we're going to use for all of our networks. Since I know that I am using 64, I put the 1 underneath that, and that was done on purpose, that number, 64, Every new network is going to start with 64. That's going to be what we call the increment. Our next network, as I said, would be dot .64. So it would be 192.168.100.64. The next one, add 64 to this, is dot .128. And the last one, dot .192. I could go all the way up to 255 if I wanted to. Of course, these numbers are all going to carry down. 192.168.100.255. Why 255 instead of 256? Well, if you notice our first network, it started at zero. That actually counts as a digit. So if you take zero all the way to 255, you are actually using 256 digits. That's how, you know, 255 doesn't equal 256. However, we're using 256 digits. So if I have the beginning of all my networks, that's what's called our network address. And every network needs one. Every network also needs a broadcast address. If I have the beginning, I'll know the end. Because this is the beginning of this network. The end must be less than the next network, right? So I'm going to take the 64, which we got from up here, and say this one ends right before that. So it ends at 63. The next one ends at 127. The next one at 191. The next one at 254. Now I know my network addresses. I know my broadcast addresses. I need a gateway. For every network, we need a gateway to assign to the hosts. 
Very simple. I'm going to use the next digit. In other words, dot one, dot sixty five, dot one twenty nine, dot one ninety three, and of course this last one, there is none. I now have my network address, my gateway, my broadcast address, now the numbers that I can assign to hosts. Here it's two, there's sixty two. Here, 66 through 126. Here, 130 up to 190. And 194 to 253. We now have created four networks, four new networks with the same subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 192. We have the network address the gateway, addresses we can use for hosts, and the broadcast address. Andrew, any questions? Oh, no, Dave, everything was perfect. All right, so I want you to do one now. So let me erase all of this, and I want you to use the same base network, that way you don't have to rewrite everything. But let's use a different example. If you guys have it, you should be able to do it, and I have no doubt that you can. I have my full confidence in you. There you go. Andri, let's do another number of hosts. Let's say we want to do networks based on, I don't know, what do you think, 18 hosts? Let's go 18 hosts. It's 18 fine. hosts, that's a great number. Hi, I'm Andri uh, from ORT Chicago. So I'm going to go the same, what they just explained to him, I'm going to explain a different way with a different number of hosts. Uh, First, we're going to find the increment. Of course, we have to find the increment. How to find that? Of course, through this chart over here which is the base of the subnetting. If you know this chart, if you have this chart, you can do whatever you want. I was one of those that was scared about subnetting, but after this, it's like nothing. Like butter. <laughs> <laughs> so now, we have to find the increment, right? Perfect, so we said 18 hosts, perfect. But don't forget, we have to add two more hosts, two more uh, IP addresses, which one is gonna be the network address, and the other one is going to be broadcast this. So it means it's going to be like around 20. So look at this chart, 20, right? 20 is bigger than 16, so of course we're going to go to 32. That means the 32 is going to be our increment, right? So we put one bit over here. But from here, it's pretty easy how many bits we have to borrow to create our networks for 18 hosts. It's one. Two, so total is three bits borrowed. Finding this, we can find very simple what our new subnet mask is going to be, which is going to be pretty easy. It's going to be 255. Por <laughs> Calizera. So it's going to be 255, 255. 255. So comes the question how we're going to find out the last number of the subnet mask, which is pretty easy, simple math. It's going to be 128 plus 64 plus 32. These are the numbers that we use for bits to borrow. The total of this is going to be 224. So we have the last number, which is going to be 224. Now, what kind of slash what? We cannot use 24 anymore. 24 is our base network. We borrow 3, 24 plus 3, that's going to be 27. So after finding this, we got, I think, the most difficult part. Let's set that mask for our new networks that we're going to use here. Now, we said that our increment was 32. So our, in, our network is going to start, of course, from the base, which is a 0 one. And then the second one is going to start with an increment 32. This, this doesn't change. Like they explained over here, we borrow in bits from the host to create network. The first three octet over here doesn't change. So we're going to work in this area over here. So this is going to say 192, 168, 100, 32. The other network is going to be 32 plus 32, which is going to be 64. It stay the same. Now, we need another one just to, we can, I'm showing you how much go on, we can go to 255. That's our number of digits that we use. 
from 0 to 55, which is 226. 256, excuse us. <laughs> um, no other say. So we have the base, right? Perfect. Now, from this, pretty much I have the network addresses which I needed before. Now I can find the broadcast address. Broadcast address is pretty easy. It's going to start with zero, but it's going to end with the lowest number from 32. So we cannot use 32 because it's network address is going, going to be 31. From this network, it starts with 32, and here it's going to be 63. It's 64 minus 1. From here, it's going to be uh, 64 starts in network address. It's going to end up with 95, 96 minus 1. So if I had something here, it's going to be 128. So just just an idea to have which is going to be our broadcast address over here. That means it's going to be 127. I got my networks. Now I need to find the host. No, first, sorry. First we have to find the gateway. We always have to have a gateway so we can connect to our network. The gateway, I prefer to use the first numbers, which is the first numbers from this network here, it's going to be dot 1. From this network here, it's going to be dot 33. Network over here is going to be 65. And here, it's going to be 97. After I found this, and after I found the network address, the broadcast address, and the gateway, pretty much the number of holes is simple. It's going to start from 2, because I cannot use 1, which is a gateway, and it's going to be 230. Because I cannot use 30 first. Broadcast address and network address doesn't change. It's going to be exactly the same. And the second network is going to be 34 to 62. The third network is going to be 66 to 94. And here we're going to have a 97 to 98. Wait, sorry. <laughs> 98 to 126. Pretty much we have our host. This is our network. Now my teammate Ariana is going to show you how to get this network implemented in a topology of small network that we have. Okay, thank you so much Dave and Envy for showing us that it's not scary to subnet networks. Okay. My name is Ariana and I'm from Chicago ORT and I'm going to show you how to apply the network addresses to a simple network. Okay. Now that we have this network address here, I'm going to implement it to a simple network over there. Okay, let's take a look at our network. We have a PC, which is a host in here, a switch, a router, a network link, another router, another switch, and another host. Okay, let's see how many networks we have. We have one network right here. We have another network here. And we have one network here. So basically, we have one, two, and three networks in the simple network topology. Now let's let's see how many network addresses we can use. Since we have three networks there, let us use this first, second, and third network addresses that Envy showed us. Okay. Let me rewrite the networks down here. So the first network is going to be 192.100, I'm sorry, 168.100.0 slash 27. For our second network, we have 192.168.100.32 slash 27. For our last network, we have 192.168.100.68. And for our new subnet mask, we have 255.255.255.224. Now that we have our three network addresses here, we can now use it to these three networks we have. 
okay? This is our first network, so we can use this first network address here, which is 100.0/27. So basically, this first network is the 100.0/27 network. Now that we know our default gateway is the next number to the network address, which is dot one, we can use it for this interface, which is the default gateway of this first network. For this host, we can use dot five as our address. For our second network right here, we can use the second address that we have, which is 100.32 slash 27 network. And we have one and two hosts here. We can use dot 34 and dot 35 for these hosts. And for our last network right here, this one, we can use the last address here, which is 100.64/27. Okay, our default gateway is the number next to the network address, which is dot .67. So we're gonna put it on this interface. Dot .65. I mean, I'm so sorry. Okay, dot .65. Okay, sorry for the confusion. And now for the host, we can use dot .75. Okay, here we go. We have our simple network and we apply theory into practice. See, it's as simple as it seems, okay? Now, I'm gonna give this marker to Johnny and he's gonna t show us another technique to submit. Okay, Johnny? Thank you very much, Ariana. Hello, my name is Johnny, reporting live from ORT Institute, Chicago. All right, so what we've learned so far is how to subnet and find you know, um, networks that can support the number of hosts. But what if somebody was to say, I want you to take this base network here and make me three networks out of it. Could it work the same? Could this be a new groundbreaking discovery? I don't know. Let's see. So, three networks, right? So we're gonna go here, and we're gonna know that it's gonna be in between two, above, greater than two. So we're gonna have to go to four. So if you look below the four, you can see that our network is gonna increase in the increments of 20, I mean of 64. So, we're gonna put a one right there, and a one here. So we're, we know we're going to borrow two bits to make, this net, to make these networks. So we're going to go over here and we're going to get our new subnet maps. So we're going to have 255, 255, 255. And now you know that this is going to be a slash 26 network because you're borrowing two bits. <coughs> you see here, 24 on the base. This is how many hosts you usually have. If you're borrowing two, you're gonna add two to it. So let's see here. So it's gonna be, you're gonna add, to get the subnet match, you're gonna add these two up, the 128 and the 64, which will be 192. So you have 192 here, slash 26. Let me ask a question, Johnny. Does that mean I can use that new subnet mask for every network? Yes. For every network that you're going to create here. So I created a subnet mask. Now we know the increment and we can apply that subnet mask to every single network? Yes. Show me. I'm Let's confused. See how it's done. <laughs> I'm going to show you how it's done. Show me. Let's see. All right. So now that you have your new subnet mask, you know how many bits you borrow because you got your new subnet mask. Let's make our new networks here. Now remember, you need a network address and you need a broadcast address. So, when we come here, we're going to know that we're going to start with 192, 168, 100. Now, remember it increases in the increments of 64. So you're going to have a 64 here. It's starting to look familiar, right? Sure does. <laughs> Let me show you the rest. All right. Next one, 
one, twenty-eight. Now, this is three networks here. You have three networks already. I'm just going to go ahead and put the next increment down here just so you have it for reference. Well, that'll help us get the broadcast address, won't it? So yeah, that's a smart know. thing to do is to write that fourth number out, so isn't it? Help us get the broadcast address. Man, you're right. always thinking, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you have your network address here. Got it. You need your broadcast address. Got it. How do I find it? You're going to find your broadcast address because your broadcast address is going to end before the next network. So if you have a Got it. So wait a minute. The, net, the broadcast address of the first network is going to end before the second network starts. So if the second network starts at 64, where does the first one end? first one ends at 63. Th that makes sense to me. All right. So I can't you, use the same numbers, can I now? No, you cannot. I'll show you why. So you got your zero right here, right? Yep, got this it. That counts as a digit. All right, so you're going to go over here, and you're going to see that you have 64 here. So you're going to do zero, and as your broadcast address for this first network here, this first network, you're going to do 63. Aha, that's the broadcast address. What do you have here? So it would be 128 minus 1, which would be 64 to, to 127. Oh, I'm getting it. 192 here minus 1 would be 128 through 191. So then you would, now you have your. Let me ask you a question. I don't mean to derail you, but doesn't that equate, I'm going to step in front here. Doesn't that also mean, because I'm going from 0 to 63, I'm using 64 digits? Sure does. Yes, it does. So that means that every network is using 64 digits, and we're going back to this table. Yes. That's why this table is so cool to use. Yeah. Because it's a lot easier. I'm going to have to figure out yeah, I don't to want to do the exponents. Exponents. All ah. that crazy nonsense. <laughs> that stuff is silly. That? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> well, you can just use this guy right here. This seems easier to me. <laughs> All right. So just like we were given examples earlier, we want to find our gateways. And we're going to just use one uh, more than your network address, just to keep it simple. I'm a simple man. A simple I man like simple. Too. OK, simple. then. All right. So we're going to do dot one right here. One more than that. Dot 65. One more than this. It's dot 129. We have three networks right there. but. For this one down here, I'll just, you know. Why not? Reference. You're there. Why not? All right. So now you have your network addresses, your gateway, and your broadcast address. Now we need to find how many hosts you can support. Right. Network. Or the IP's address that we can assign to the host. Yes, assign to the host. Gotcha. Gotcha. All That's right. important. So you can't. Or else why do we sub that? <laughs> You're right there, coach. <laughs> All right, so you have, you, have, you have your network here, your gateway, and your broadcast address. We all know you cannot use those. So we're going to have our host, or the addresses we're able to assign to host will be, in this network it will be 2 to 62. In this network it will be 66 to 126. Oh, sorry. Pork it in easy end. <laughs> and in this one it will be 130 to 190. And we can do this one too down here. Even though we only need three networks, we can do 194 to yeah. 253. Perfect. All right. All right. Excellent. Come on up, Ariana. Thank you. That taught me a lot. <laughs> that taught me a lot. Come on up, Ariana. And hey, I want to introduce Sam because Sam Gabay is the uh, technical coordinator at ORT Chicago. And uh, Ariana, where can they find ORT Chicago? Is there a website? Yes, they can actually uh, visit us at www.ortchicagotech.com. You. So, we have now taught you how to subnet. We think it's a much easier way than the traditional way. Um, it's an easier way than the Cisco actually teaches, but we could end up with the same result. 
Um, we've read multiple books, and this is a much easier way. We are uh, subnetting based on number of networks, number of hosts. We showed you how to apply it so you can build labs. And you can either build labs with Cisco Packet Tracer or real equipment. Thanks so much. Andrew, do your magic, coach. <laughs> we'll turn that son of a sailor off. <laughs>